Johnny Johnny, yes papa, killing people, no papa, show me your hands, ha ha ha. This quote is from Dante Alighieri's Inferno poem, which talks about an adventurous journey from hell to heaven. This quote was inscribed on the gates of hell. This is the meaning of the quote. Ironically, this summary matches a lot with the life of John Wick, because he was preparing for a war against the high table which was equal to making a path towards hell. Well, this was never a part of the actual quote, by the way. To what do I owe the pleasure? My ring. My freedom. Your ring is gone. Like the elder before me. Did you understand what the new elder meant by that? The previous elder had been killed by the high table governing members because of giving Johnny a second chance in chapter 3. Fuck. And no one escapes the table. Yeah. I have a question. How did the Harbinger lose his finger? Was the Harbinger given a new life just like John Wick was given a new life in Chapter 3 by the Elder? If that turns out to be true, we definitely need a backstory on this guy. He seems badass enough to hold a compelling and thrilling past history. At least even a Netflix series on this guy would be enough for us. What do you think? That sand timer glass was placed before Winston as an ultimatum to see the marquee before the hotel gets blown up. And there's another timer glass on the table of the marquee with the exact timing. And then the hotel gets blown up exactly when the time was up. What the fuck? These guys have the punctuality of the Navy SEALs. Emotional support animal. She's your support animal. Other way around. I'm hers. Is it that bad? Why did Mr. Nobody say that he is the emotional support person to his dog? Maybe he was just exaggerating his emotions for the dog? I don't see any other way around. If you take a look at the personal diary of Mr. Nobody, you can get to know a lot about his past history. The first page tells us that John Wick was last seen somewhere I could not read but he is supposed to be in Osaka Continental Hotel and the bounty he will ask for killing Johnny is 23 million US dollars and guess what, this guy actually demanded 23 million dollars from the Frenchman after meeting him. How much would such a service be worth? Like me some more. 23. This guy is a genius, definitely wanna see a backstory of his life. The second page shows a cross mark on the face of Sharon meaning he is dead, Winston is alive and the Continental has been burned down. I'm not going to be surprised if this guy speculated that outcome even before it happened. The third page shows the dog of Mr. Nobody which used to be in the army I guess. Maybe Mr. Nobody was in the military probably serving in Iraq in 2007, who knows. The fourth page shows that the bounty on John Wick was anticipated to be 15 million US dollars by Mr. Nobody which is nearly accurate because the bounty on him was 14 million US dollars in the end of chapter 3. His next anticipation has also turned out to be true which is 18 million US dollars. His other anticipations of 23 million to 35 to 40 million dollars also turned out to be true. Ah, 35 it is. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't our deal. What? Now you listen to me. 40. You pay for the service. The fifth page shows that this guy wanted to buy a landed property worth of 48.3 million US dollars which has a 9264 square feet of mansion, 55 acres of total land, 6 bedrooms, 8 bathrooms, $1,023,400 of annual property taxes, and a name which is pronounced Daisy. Now I don't know if Daisy is the name of his dog or somebody else but the actual question is if he needed 48.3 million US dollars to buy his property, why did he choose to settle for 40 million dollars in the end? Who else would give him the rest of the money? By the way, Daisy is also the name of the first dog gifted to John Wick. Another page shows a Google map location which is in Brandenburg where the Rusko Roma family is based on. That means this guy speculated from the very beginning that John can possibly go to Berlin for getting his ticket mended. What the f
Stark. Did this guy just nick the time stone of Doctor Strange from the New York City or what? This page shows a medicinal herb seemingly poisonous when ingested. Now, I have no idea exactly why he has an interest in that topic. It was too obscure for me to read and understand the words on the pages. You can again see the page of Marky where the fabric ribbon was and this picture probably was referring to the bloody action that was about to take place in the hotel by the men of the Marky for the first time. Blame do your job. This guy literally could have called him by his name but he just called him a blind man. It's an expression of anger towards the man as he was enjoying a bowl of ramen soup in the middle of the fight. This guy was drinking on the job. They gave you my name. Yeah. I'm sorry. Me too. Do you know why John said sorry to Kane? Because he wanted to apologize to Kane in advance for killing him, which fortunately didn't happen. But look at the confidence of this guy. He believes that he can just kill everybody, every moving thing around him. I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Was that dialogue intentional to match the rhythm like a poem? You took a deal. Same as you, John. Did you realize exactly what Kane wanted to mean by that? In chapter 2, John had to take a deal of killing the sister of Santino because of the marker as he had no other choice. And now, Kane had to take a deal of killing John as he had a past agreement of being in service to Marquis whenever they want and however they want. He didn't have a choice just like our Johnny didn't have. I'm no use to you or the table. <laughs> That's not for you to decide. The agreement with the table stays the same. We give you a name, you give us a life. You dead, John? I thought the answer would be, yeah. I'm just wondering if Kane can cause so much damage to John in a single fight despite being a blind man. Can you imagine what the hell he was capable of when he had both of his headlights working? I definitely want to see a backstory of Kane in his prime time as well as exactly why he had to give away his both eyes to the high table. And is there any way he lost his both eyes to the high table to get a new life just like we saw in John Wick chapter 3? I need you to take better care of yourself, Johnny. Because we're in this together now. This conversation sounds a lot like a man telling a chicken to get enough time to grow itself big enough so that the man can get the maximum amount of meat out of the chicken. Well sir, your meat is not sufficient enough for me to feed my hunger. So, you better be taking care of yourself a bit more so that I can yield more meat out of you in the future. And John was like, where the hell am I? Just take care of your daughter. If Koji would have given up that time, we would get to see another fight scene inside the subway train. Because when Akira ran away, she got into the same subway train as John did. So, if Koji would not fight with Kane, he definitely would have tracked Johnny to the subway station. So, lives. I'll be waiting for you. John Wick couldn't manage to kill the blind man and he died instead. Is there any way Akira will come back to take a revenge on Kane by killing his daughter Mia in chapter 5? Or is she going to forgive the blind man? Bloodshed in Osaka was not necessary. A man's ambition should never exceed his worth. This guy was always against the ideas of Marky. No wonder why his reaction was normal during the unexpected death of the Marky. He was even happy to see John Wick being able to come upstairs killing everybody in the ground. 